All right, Steeler talk coming up shortly, but first we're talking about the Pittsburgh Penguins who lost at home last night, and they play one more home game tomorrow against Colorado before they go on the road and see Mark andre Fleury. Jason Mackey, I'll start with you on this one. We have seen a recurring theme. First period, flat starts. It cost them again last night. Two quick goals, 19 seconds. They're 2-9-1 when they don't score first. So what gives here, and what has to change? Well, they need to have a better readiness and awareness from the drop of the puck. That was Mike Sullivan's uh, word, comment that he repeated over and over again Saturday night against the Leafs. They're driving their coach absolutely bonkers. I can tell you that. Uh, there are a lot of things that need to change, and, and their issues in the first period have sort of been all over the map. On Saturday, you saw goals that were actually in the defensive zone that they just failed to pick up who they were supposed to pick up. They've seen uh, problems off the rush. They've had times where they've just got blown out of the building, had bad goaltending. Anything, uh, it, at this point, it's more global than it is any, any localized issue, uh, but they just need to wake up. I mean, they need to realize the problems that they're causing for themselves, and it needs to come from every player in the lineup. They have not been anywhere near good enough, consistently enough, early on in games. The thing I don't, I don't get about that is if it's, uh, if it's either a hangover or not being able to you know, convince yourself or motivate yourself that these games are important. It's so hard for me to fathom that because of who the head coach is and who the team leader is. You know, you'd think with Mike Sullivan and Sidney Crosby, these lapses that we're talking about with this team would be harder to come by. So, I mean, what is it? it, it in that dressing room, it's easy for them to say, hey, we've got the players. We just, we got to do a better job of being on our P's and Q's at the start of the game. It's a harder question. It's a more difficult thing if it's a matter of talent. And once you get 30 games into a season, once you get closer to the halfway point, you wonder if it's talent. I mean, they willed themselves to a Stanley Cup last year, then they lost a lot off that team, Jason. So, you know, you see a team like Toronto and you think, well, maybe it's not how we prepare for games. Maybe it's the fact that they're just better than us. It could be. Uh, and I don't want to steal Pomp's transition here, but I, I think it's important to point out some of the personality that was in the room last year that they've lost. And I think we're seeing some of that. I wrote something a few days ago that they should entertain looking into Matt Cullen and see if he's available for Minnesota. And I truly believe that. I think they miss a guy like that. When you look at bad starts, other things, other lapses in their game, they really need a guy, one of those heart and soul guys. You look at Chris Kunitz, Marc-Andre Fleury, Matt Cullen, Ron Hainsey, Trevor Daly. They lost some serious voices, man. And I really think that they they're missing them right but now. But when you have Crosby, you need those guys, Jason? Yes. You yes, really you so? do. He's not a magic elixir. I mean, he's a good player. He's a great player. He's the best player in the game right now. But he doesn't cover, you know, he can't be on the ice at all times. He can't defend goals. He can't impact other people's want to, you know, would like to believe that. And he sets a great example. But, I mean, just because he comes out all jacked up, it doesn't Well, who do you think are the guys? Let, let's just put it on the table. Sure. Who do you think are the guys that aren't playing hard enough right well, now? Well, I didn't think Malkin was very good in the first period. I didn't think Kessel was very good in the first period. I didn't think Riley Shea. I, I actually thought Riley Shea was terrible in the first period. Ole Mata and Ian Cole were standing around watching goals being scored. I mean, Chris Letang was okay. He's had some issues early on. I mean, you know... We, don't, we can sit here and name names, but again, at some point, everybody during the course of the season has had a bad first period, and, and lately it's been more collective than it has anything else. All right, I want to ask you real quick about the goalie situation because Matt Murray looks to be poised to come back here. So, Andrew, how would you handle uh, Justin Jari? has acquitted himself well last night. I don't put on him at all. I think, as Jason just said, they were terrible, and it affects the goaltender. How would you play them? How would you share their duties? Uh, this is what I would do. If they're not going to give Jari more opportunities, then what I would do is I would send him down. Uh, I know that they're not going to do it like a 60-40 split. It's probably going to be more 80-20. The only times Jari is going to play is when it's the second half of a back-to-back. -back. But the way I would do it is if you're not going to treat it more like it's a 1-1-A one one situation, I would have Jari down in the American League. I do think they're going to treat it like it's a 1-A, 1-B situation. Uh, and for the reason being that, I remember a conversation I had with Jim Rutherford over the summer, and he said one of the reasons they feel like they've been so good the past two seasons is that they've had a healthy goaltender. Even uh, Mark andre Fleury, when he played, he was rested from backing up Matt Murray, and Matt Murray was coming back from an injury this year. And before that, you know, Murray's late emergence. So I, I really do think they're going to try to get by with Jari playing maybe 40% of the games and Murray playing 60. I don't think there's anything where they feel like they have to play Matt Murray. If anything, right. I think they feel like they have to let him go. 
Before we go to a break and talk some Steelers, and it's going right down to the wire, it's time for our smooth moves. We go around the horn. It's brought to you by Armina Stone, Pittsburgh's largest supplier of the smoothest granite, marble, and quartz countertops you will find. So, Jason, what is your smooth move of the week? My smooth move of the week is one of the most beloved athletes ever to come through Pittsburgh, Mark andre Fleury. Good to see him back on the ice. Can't wait to see him in Vegas. He is one of the best. My smooth move is Saquon Barkley finishing fourth in the Heisman Trophy voting. A guy that I thought handled himself with a lot of class this season. Probably deserved better with his offensive line this year, but still had a great season nonetheless. All right, I'm going to go Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak. He's been outstanding in the NBA. You haven't watched, I'm sure, out there, but you should. He is a special athlete, and he was smooth the other night with a triple-double and some unbelievable dunks. That's our smooth moves brought to you by Armina Stone. They are... Pittsburgh's largest indoor stone gallery of granite marble countertops imported from all over the world to give you the smoothest moves. At home, Steeler Talk, when we come back right here live on KDKA.